Five Nights at Freddy's fan games. There's way too many of them. There's literally thousands of them out there with gameplay so boring that I have to put Subway Surfers footage on the screen just to keep you entertained. But every now and again, there's a fan game that comes out that is absurdly difficult. And in today's video, that's what we're going to be doing because we're playing Mechanism. Created by fellow YouTuber Andy Matronic, this fan game doesn't look like much, but it is so absurdly difficult that even the creator herself didn't even finish the entire game. I've been cheating my way through because I personally cannot beat the hardest endings. So that's what I'm gonna do. Much to the dismay of every single person in the courtroom, I have somehow been granted access to extremely difficult games, and I'm totally not playing this because I don't have an idea for sister location. That's totally not a reason. So what are the rules for this challenge? Y you know, beat the game. But in all seriousness, this game has eight different endings, and in order to be deemed legally insane, I need to beat all eight. So th that's what I'm doing. And finally, before this video starts, I have to give a massive shout out to these three absolute legends, Nova, Omega X, and Toad Cool one I found these three on the Mechanism Game Jolt page and we created a Discord group chat and worked together to find every single ending. This video definitely wouldn't have been possible without their help, so massive shout out to these three. And that's basically all I have to say. Let's get into this stupidly hard game. <laughs> Alright, so I played this game literally a few days after it came out, and I decided to do it on stream for some reason, so here's some moments from that. Oh hey, it's Foxy. Why is he looking so- <laughs> he's hitting the rock. Oh my- What the- Yo! <laughs> Dude, I just got killed by light skin Michael Afton, bro. Bro, <laughs> what <laughs> Are you good? Ah, what the f wait, hey, wait, 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 let's talk about it, let's talk about it, hold on! Oh, there's a kid, there's a kid in the vents, bro, there's a kid in the vents, there's a child in the vents, there's a kid, I blew up the kid! There's a kid in the bathroom! Yo, 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 whoa, hey. Hi, the kid's dead. There's the dog. You remember the dogs by the dogs. He's coming off the stage. Wait, 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 wait! His head lemonade clown? No! The lemonade! Oh! Again? That happened to- That's the second time that's happened to me. Why is there a security camera in the damn bathroom, bro? Hey! No, I can't. Okay. I choked. Ah, <laughs> bro! Jumping. We're trying to jump the night guard and then do a mukbang. We're talking- oh! Nobody told me there's a furry in there! How you doing? I'm doing great. You weren't talking to me. Okay, that's fine. Oh, watch it, watch it, hold up. We'll find Michael Jackson right now. Look, 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 wait, hold up. Boom, furry Michael Jackson. But he doesn't even know where I am, bro. He doesn't even know where I am. What the fu- Hey, that was fun. Now it's time to, you know, actually get into the video. In order to split up all the information about this game into every single ending, I'm going to be talking about the first 10 levels and explaining how they work for this ending. And for every new ending, I'm going to be explaining some more levels, as well as talking about the requirements to get each ending. And just for fun, I'm also going to be putting every single ending into a tier list based on how difficult they are. So with that said, let's start a new game. Obviously, this game starts on night one, and as you can see, we play as Freddy Fazbear trying to sell the night guard some insurance. At the top left of our screen, you can see our score. It's literally just completely useless. In the top middle of our screen, you can see our battery, which is a little bit more important. Our battery will slowly run down over time, and if we take too long to complete a level, we're gonna die. This meter gets super annoying in later levels because it means we have to do all the stuff required in a minimum amount of time. And finally, at the top right, we have our gears. These gears act as both Freddy's ammunition for shooting and killing enemies, and it also acts as Freddy's health bar. So if we shoot a gear, we're gonna lose one, and if we take any damage, we're also gonna lose one. And you can guess what happens if we take damage when we have no gears. And that is literally it. We are just exploring all these levels, trying to find the night guard so we can kill him. 
So why is this game even hard? I'll tell you, if we lose all of our gears and die, regardless of what level we're on, we will always get reset to the very beginning of the game. So if we die on something like level 1, that's fine, we can just restart. But if we died like 2 seconds away from getting the ending, uh oh, we died, so now we have to do the entire thing all over again. But without giving too much away on how much I started to hate this game, let's talk about the knights. Here's the map layout for level 1. For anybody wondering what those pink boxes are, they're triggers for the player to run into. I literally pulled these pictures from the game files, so that's why they look so weird. As you can see, this level is extremely easy. The night guard's right here, so all you have to do is do a big loop and you're done with this level. There's only one enemy in this level, and it's this guy. You wanna know his name? Enemy. This enemy is extremely easy to dodge. They either move back and forth or up and down until they hit a wall and then they bounce back. And that's all they do. And that's it. We walk past both enemies and go and jump scare the night guard, and now we're done with night one. Night 2 is a little bit different. Here's the map layout, and you want to know why it's different? It's because there's a door. There's a small wooden door at the bottom right of the map, and all you have to do is shoot it to knock it down, and that's where the night guard is. So again, nothing extremely difficult. There's the same enemies, and it's level 2, so I don't know what you expected. But level 3 has a door and a switch. Um... <clears throat> This switch is used to turn off the power to the door so we can go jump scare the night guard. It's hidden in this back room which we have to destroy a door to get to, as well as knocking over some pizza boxes to actually flip the switch. And in addition to that, we also get introduced to another enemy. This enemy is known in the game files as Huggy. This is what Huggy looks like, and for fun, this is what Huggy looks like when they're fucking dead. This enemy literally just acts the exact same as the first one, except for it's a little bit slower and it takes three gears to kill instead of one. So in pretty much all my runs, since Huggy has such beefy HP, I would pretty much always walk past them. And again, that's basically it for this night. I know I'm not making it sound very difficult, but that's because this is level 3, and I can't. Level 4 is very similar to level 3. We flip a switch to turn off the power to a door so we can go kill the night guard. But other than the level just being way bigger, we also get introduced to one of our final enemies. The enemy in question is the one you're seeing on screen right now. It's known in the game files as Enemy W. And I can say with full confidence that this enemy is one of my least favorite things in the entire game. This enemy only has one health, so that's not a problem. The problem is, they can literally move in any of the four directions whenever they want. So we either need some godly fakes to get past them, or we can just use up one of our gears to shoot them right in their stupid face. With level 4 done, we're on to level 5, which is where the game starts to get pretty hard. It's in this night where we get to meet everyone's favorite villain, William Afton. But who the f*** are you? Purple guy, or as he's known in the game files, enemy A, enemy B, or enemy HSP, is an enemy in the game that takes 5 hits to kill as well as having the ability to move diagonally. And also, to make matters worse, in the non-patched version of the game, he was even able to move faster than you. Looking at the map, purple guy spawns right here, and the night guard's right here, so I literally need to get past him to make it to the night guard. So how am I gonna do that? I don't know. Obviously, I can kill him, but I just don't have enough gears for that to be a viable strategy. So instead of trying to kill him, I'm gonna walk into that room and wait for him to start chasing me. And once he does, I'm gonna take a loop around this part of the map back to where the night guard is. And after doing this, I should have gotten far enough away from purple guy that he doesn't want to chase us anymore, and now we can just walk to the night guard. With that level completed, we're now onto level 6, which is as simple as walking down this hallway, breaking a door, entering this vent... Don't make a joke about that. ...and then just, you know, murdering the night guard in cold blood. The next level, level 7, is literally even easier. This is the entire map, but all I have to do is walk out of this door and then keep going right, and there's the night guard, that's it. And after we do some cannibalism, we're on to level 8, which is probably one of my favorite looking levels in this entire game. Other than just looking cool, this level's pretty simple. All we have to do is knock down a door, go flip a switch, go to the door we cut power to, and go kill the night guard. But in this level, we get introduced to our final two basic enemies, Van Cut and Van Knife. These two enemies are literally the exact same except for an appearance change, and they're basically just a nerfed version of Purple Guy. They can still move diagonally, but they die in two hits instead of five, and they're also way slower. And the best thing about these enemies is they always have a guaranteed drop of three gears. 
That feature becomes a key component of some of the later runs, so these animatronics are very, very important. And that's all for this level. Again, these levels don't seem that difficult, but when you remember if I die on any of them, then I lose 10 to 15 minutes of progress just to make it back, eh, they're annoying. But again, making it to level 9, it's just flipping a switch, walking through a door, and jump scaring the night guard. With level 8 finished, we move on to level 9, which is very easy and a little bit less cool looking. But in this level, there is something super important. I'm not going to be talking about it now because it's more relevant in later runs, but just know, this level is very, very important. Like I said, this level is really easy. It's actually a lot like level 5 since there's an unavoidable purple guy encounter. Luckily, purple guy's AI is kind of stupid. So if we just do a lap around this table, then we have a free walk to the night guard, and that's it for level 9. Moving into level 10, it's a bonus night. There's no enemies, there's no battery timer, it's just a bonus night. So, after completing this level, and, you know, skipping over the other levels that I'm not talking about, hey, we made it to the end. This level right here is level 19. The map isn't very interesting because it's basically just a boss fight. But instead of engaging the boss fight, if we just walk up to the serial child murderer and give him an axe, then we get an ending. This ending, also known as Cog in his machine, is without a doubt the easiest ending. Because it literally doesn't require you to finish all the levels. Don't get me wrong, it's still annoying. If you were to die on level 18, then you'd lose like 20 minutes of progress. But it's not that bad. For ending difficulty, it's definitely going in a D tier. It's actually pretty easy. So hopefully the next ending's gonna be a little bit harder. The stalling of Michael Mikael Afton. I think it's actually William Afton, but I don't f care. Run away. Whoa, hey! <laughs> I had two. Wait, what the f? I had two. Did I not have two? He really forgot that I was a professional table. What the f? Bruh. You are actually so cringe. That was downright the cringiest sh I've ever seen in my life, bro. <laughs> bro, what the f? <laughs> bro, what the f? Ah! Uh, oh, get juke, boy. Imagine being so cringe. Oh my god! Would it be better to like kill you here? Oh my god! If I could f aim, it would be better to kill you. Top five best gaming moments. Number five. Chicken Ninja Forty Two. His pants. Oh! Ah! You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. Bring me my axe. We'll do. Don't worry, buddy. It's coming. Pause. <laughs> my moist f <laughs> Since we're on to ending two, it's time to talk about some new levels, starting with level 11. This level is probably the easiest one in the entire game. Here's the map, all we have to do is walk down one room and left one room, there's the night guard, I don't have anything else to say. Night 12 is literally not any different. There is nothing new, no new enemies, no doors we have to shoot, no switches we have to turn off, it's just walking. Here's the map, all we have to do is walk down this long ass hallway and do some venting and we made it to the night guard. But level 13, uh, it's got mangle. Other than that, it's just another easy level. I like the look of this one though, looks pretty cool. This level does have a few Vanny enemies though, including this one right outside the spawning room. Most of the time I would just shoot this one since you use two gears and get three back, so there's no point in not. But if you're not feeling like killing any furries, you can always just walk right past her. Finally, we break our streak of really easy levels with level 14. Pretty much every level from now on becomes really difficult, and that's mainly just because of our power. As you can see from this map, the level is very, very big, and it's really easy to run out of power, especially if I don't know where I'm going. When you take into consideration how long it takes to get to these later levels, you realize why it's so tedious. Losing 20 minutes of progress to a level just because you don't know where you're going and you run out of time is really, really annoying, and that's basically the main reason why this game is so hard. 
And also in this level, we get introduced to another new enemy, which I totally forgot about. This enemy, yes, the one you're seeing on screen right now, is called Family. I don't know why I didn't make the f game, but at least I have something to go with my Subway Surfers footage. Peter, what are you doing? Crack. What the f- This enemy was actually introduced in level 9, I just didn't remember. And yes, for anybody wondering, the death animation for this enemy is called Family Dead. Getting back to the actual level, it requires us to grab a key from this back room so we can open up this cabinet, which has a hole in it, I guess? We then walk through a series of vents and drop a considerably large height, all so we can jump scare a night guard that violently got shoved in a locker. Moving on to another hard level, level 15, we have to navigate through this entire map. Why is it so fucking big? This level literally requires us to leave the pizzeria just so we can shoot the cover off a vent and flip a switch, all so we can come back to the pizzeria to jump scare the night guard. So is this level actually hard? After a few attempts? No. If I play it safe, I should have enough gears that I don't have to worry about taking damage, and it's just about making it to the switch and making it back. A lot of the difficulty from these earlier endings all comes from the player just not knowing what they're supposed to be doing. But trust me, uh, that changes. We do get to calm down and take a break from these hard levels because level 16 is a bonus level. What in the f f is that? Again, it's just a bonus level. There's no way for us to lose. So we just have to choose between getting eaten or seeing a furry vomit out a ghost. So, you know. And other than that, it's not that interesting, and we're on to level 17. Level 17 is another absolutely massive level. It is so big that it actually has two different floors. Here's floor one, it's just the basic pizzeria, and then here's floor two, and it's kind of like this weird underground secret layer. Apart from just being a big level, this one requires us to do only one thing, and that's shoot down a couple pizza boxes. In the room with the pizza boxes, there's two Vanny enemies that we pretty much always have to shoot. After killing both enemies and shooting down the pizza boxes, we take a ladder to the lower floor, and all we have to do is take the right path to make it to the night guard. And there's the night guard, now we're on to technically our final level, level 18. This level is without a doubt the largest and most convoluted bullshit I've ever seen in my entire life. Take a look at how big this level is, and keep in mind, the game expects us to figure all of this out in less than two minutes, and if we don't, we get reset back to level one. After playing this level way too many times, here's the best strategy I figured out. Leave the spawning area, go all the way to the left and enter the vent. Go all the way through this vent, exit the vent, and go all the way right just so you can pick up a key. After grabbing the key, go all the way back through the vent, back to the starting area. Now you can unlock a door and run past some vanny enemies and shoot down some pizza boxes and shoot down a door and run past another vanny enemy. And finally, there's the night guard. And I'm just supposed to know how to do all of this right off the bat because I can see the f future or whatever. And still with this super fast strategy, it's gonna take us almost two minutes. And once we've completed this level, we're now onto level 19, and I can finally explain the Springtrap boss battle you saw in ending 1. Level 19, as you saw, is our final boss fight against Michael Jackson. But just before the boss room, we get to pick up an axe that we can use as a melee attack. And to get our second ending, instead of handing the axe over to Purple Guy, we're gonna shove it right into his face. This engages the final and only boss fight of this game, in which we have two things we have to focus on. Purple Guy himself, and these small little robot kids coming out of the closet. That... Uh, that sounded a lot weirder than it was supposed to. The robot kids I was talking about are known in the game files as Biddy Babs. And when one of these Biddy Babs spawns, they can do one of two things. They'll either run to the center and stand there to protect the robot, or they're gonna start chasing after us. Luckily, regardless of what they do, they'll always die from one axe swing or one gear hit. So, as long as we're paying attention and don't get too close to any of them, we're perfectly fine. Springtrap, on the other hand, is really weird. You can't hit him directly with the axe because he'll just block it. You can't hit him with gears because that just doesn't work. And you also can't get too close to him or else he'll hit you with a classic Mike Tyson wombo combo and knock your ass out. He does have a health bar. It's displayed at the top of the screen as three separate springs. The problem is, I just don't know what to do. After experimenting for a bit, this boss fight's actually really easy. 
All you have to do is walk to the center of the screen where the robot is, and this will automatically force Springtrap over to the middle. Once you've done that, he'll start doing the f Macarena in the middle, and all you have to do is hit him with your axe. This then breaks one of the springs, leaving two left. And now all we have to do is wait for him to move from the middle of the screen and just do the exact same thing again. And after three hits, he's dead and we finally get the ending. Just kidding. Why is this a thing? After that funny haha troll, I just had to do the entire game all over again. But now we can use our axe to decapitate this furry and now we actually have our ending. We get to eat the magical mystical cake, and sadly that cake was poisoned, so now we're in heaven where we get to meet our anime friends. This ending is slightly more difficult than Cog and his machine because it requires us to actually finish the boss fight. But it is definitely nowhere near the difficulty of some of these other endings, so this one is going in C tier. But that is only ending 2 of 8, and as you can see, there might be a little bit of a secret after the Springtrap boss fight. Watch me eat this homeless guy. Ah! Wait, what the fuck? I didn't even get that. Is he in here? Bro, he's in here. He's in here with me. Ah! I'm gonna eat your mom. I'm gonna eat your mom. That uh, you. F he's in that f closet, bro. On God, he's. Ah! What? <laughs> WHAT THE fuck WAS THAT BRO?! What? I didn't hit him?! I f swung the axe, bro! Oh my god, dude! Are you f joking me?! Turn the corner, dead kid. F hell. Where- what was the plan there, dumbass? There we go. Cake! I love cake! Woo! Holy f we made it to pizza. Forgiven? Bet. <laughs> After killing Purple Guy, we can leave out the front door and get the Forgiven ending, or we can go through the secret vent to the left, which of course, leads to some more levels. On our way to these super secret levels, we get to see some fun stuff. Some trash bags, some graffiti, ink, and a dead f kid. But this place doesn't matter, it's still level 20. We have to walk down this ladder and go slice and dice up purple guy again. And once we've done that, we enter our first secret level, level 21. Level 21 has three different parts. This first part with a bunch of spikes and family enemies. This second part, which is just a big staircase with more family enemies. And this third part with an absolutely gargantuan amount of family enemies. But despite how big this level is and how many enemies there are, you can literally just run through the entire thing. When you start the level, you're given 8 gears, which is the maximum. And with these 8 gears, you can literally damage tank through every single enemy, spike, everything in this entire level. And to make it even better, in the third part with the weird windy roads, there are more gears. There is a lot of stuff to kill in this level, but there is no need for it. So it's as simple as trucking Freddy Fazbear's absolutely massive dump truck of an ass through every single child in our way. And once we're done with that, we enter a coffin for some reason, and welcome to my worst nightmare, level 22. There's been a theme going on. Every single level we do, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And level 22 is no different, because look at how big this map is. This is level 22, and just so you know how big these rooms are, that, that thing right there, that is the player. It's actually ridiculous how big this map is. This map is so big that the game even gives us unlimited power so we can complete it. You wanna know the worst thing about level 22? This absolutely humongous map isn't even our biggest problem. The problem comes when I start to talk about level 22's enemies. There are three enemies in this level, one enemy which has been present for a while and I just haven't talked about, and there's two which are exclusive to this level, including one which is just completely unfair. The first enemy is a clown, also known as Enemy Zed. This enemy first appeared in level 15, I just, you know, didn't talk about it. This enemy's movement patterns are very similar to Enemy W, except for if you gave that robot child, like, a lot of cocaine. Not only can they move diagonally, but they're also just stupidly fast. Luckily, we don't have to deal with too many of these. They only spawn in four different locations, which are marked here on the map. 
And that's it for this enemy. They die in one hit, but sadly, for some reason, we just lost our axe, so we always have to use gears. The second enemy is our first new one, and it's a cockroach. This enemy's movement patterns are the exact same as enemy one. They either move left and right or up and down. The only difference here is it's a goddamn cockroach, so it's basically indestructible. This enemy is tied with Purple Guy for the most HP, taking 5 gear hits to actually kill them. For reasons I'll mention later, I'd never actually killed any of these guys, and it's not just because they have a lot of health. There's no need to actually kill them in the first place. Here's where they spawn, and every single place that they are, you can easily just walk past them. And that's it for the Roach. Now it's time to move on to the big problem in this level. The final enemy is known as Angry Body, and it's the one that is completely unfair. Not only does this enemy move 2.4 times faster than the player, but they also have infinite health. And just to make sure that this enemy is completely broken, if Angry Body comes in contact with the player at all, your game will immediately end. Regardless of if you have one gear left or if you have the max amount of gears, you are always going to die if this enemy touches you. And just to add on a little bit more, there are so many of these enemies in the game that I can't even show you how many there are on the map. And also, this enemy will only stop chasing you if you're an entire room away from them. And that's all I have to say for the enemies in this level, but getting back to the level itself, how are we supposed to actually beat it? Directly to the right of the spawning area, there's a room containing Purple Guy, and our job is to jump scare him. The problem is, he's locked in a prison cell, and the only way to get in is if we find a key. And guess what? The key that we're looking for can be located in four different places across this entire map. The keys are located in these four rooms, which I like to call Golden Freddy Room, Spider Room, Chunky Bonnie Room, and Switch Room. So it's actually very simple. All we have to do is explore the biggest map in the entire game looking for a key while constantly being chased by an enemy that has infinite health, and if it touches us, we get reset to level 1. Luckily, it's not absolutely horrible, because there's one thing that really helps us, and it's this little coin right next to my battery. This coin actually represents an extra life that we picked up in a secret room in level 9. Remember when I said this back when I was talking about level 9? Flashback. But in this level, there is something super important. I'm not going to be talking about it now because it's more relevant in later runs. I'm talking about that, you know, now. <clears throat> This secret room is accessed through a hidden hallway in this room of level 9. If you walk in between these two benches, it'll take you to the secret room and you can grab the extra life. Fun fact, in the original version of this game, this room was actually very, very secret. But in the newest version of this game, the creator just completely gave up on keeping the room secret and literally made Chica point to it. So with this extra life, we now have two attempts at level 22. Trust me, this doesn't help, like, at all, but it's better than nothing. Once we finally find the key and make it back, we can unlock Purple Guy's jail cell and finally kill this piece of sh**. Once we kill Purple Guy, all we have to do is die, and then we get the ending. And on our tier list, this ending is definitely way harder than the last two. Not only does it require us to complete the entire game, but we also have to finish a level with a completely unfair enemy. So this ending definitely deserves a B tier. Broski, that is nerd behavior, Jesus Christ. What do you play, Genshin Impact or something? Oh. What the fuck is that? It disappeared. Are you fucking joking? <laughs> what the fuck is that? I couldn't move. Okay, so don't go there. Whatever you do, don't go there. The real question is, do I really care? What are the odds that I pick my pants live on stream? I'm not even streaming. You could if you wanted to, but I I don't really want you to. You know what I'm saying? Can you stop? Can he get into this room? Is there places where his chungus ass can't fit in? No. What? How did you hit me there? Bro, that bull is so cringe, dude. Why are you going this way? So, now you might as well just call me Krispy Kreme. Hey, yo. Are you fucking kidding me? 
Bro, I'm gonna make you eat my kids. What? <laughs> pause. Pause, 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 pause. That was a hard pause. Bro, what am I supposed to do? If I run out of power here, I'm gonna fuck defecate myself. I swear, I, I'm not above shit my pants right now, trust me. I'm missed. How did I miss? I'm gonna... I don't know if you're gonna be there when I fucking get up here, but... Uh, yep, of course you are. I'm in the middle of butt fuck nowhere, and there's this fuck. Okay. Freddy fuck <laughs> balls. Can you help me, please? I fuck missed. How in the fuck Christ did I miss? What am I stuck on, bro? Oh my god. Bro, like, how am I getting stuck on that? Why are you fuck? Aiming the wrong way, you dumbass. Bro, what? Why is there one there now? You're not gonna hit me, are you? How the fuck? Bro! Yes, dude. You fuck bitch! You are such a fuck bitch! Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, I didn't know that was an ending. What the fuck? I didn't know that was an ending. <laughs> Our fourth ending, no off switch, is definitely completely different from the last one. It requires us to have a score of over 135,000. Then that's it. You'd go through this game killing every single enemy, collecting every single item, and overall just getting tons of points. But that's not me. In this room of level 20, also known as room 125, there are four hidden invisible items that we can pick up, consisting of two present twos and two present threes. These items are located on a secret path off to the left and right of the ladder, and if we collect all four items, that'll give us a total of 7,000 points. The best thing about this is, these items will reset with the room, so if I leave and re-enter the room, we're gonna be able to pick these up again and get another 7,000 points. And just to make all of this absolutely perfect, level 20 is actually a bonus night, meaning we have no battery timer, meaning we can do this for as long as we want. The funniest thing about this is, I'm guessing Andy put this into the game so she could playtest this ending, and she either just didn't take it out or didn't think anybody was gonna find it. So now what was supposed to be a somewhat difficult ending, requiring us to get a really really high score, is now just the exact same as the mechanism ending but with a little bit of point farming in between. So now that the only special requirement for this ending is completely non-existent, now's probably a good time to explain my strategy for dealing with Angry Body. There are three things that are used in this strategy, the cockroaches, using some gears to stun him, and some weird teleportation AI. The cockroaches are pretty self-explanatory. Like I said earlier, I never actually killed any of them. And this is because the cockroaches actually have a physical hitbox, meaning if Angry Body's chasing after us, there is a chance for him to just get stuck on a cockroach and lose aggro on us because we got too far away. This obviously doesn't happen a lot, but if we keep all the cockroaches alive, there is the chance for this to happen. The second thing was gear stunning. As you know, Angry Body cannot be killed, he has infinite health. But if we do manage to hit him with a gear, he will get stunned for a few seconds. This gives us some extra time to make up some distance to hopefully have him disappear. This doesn't work perfectly all the time, because, you know, I can miss. But this little tiny stun, even though it's only for a few seconds, makes this 100 times easier. The third and final thing is, the chasing AI of these enemies is really weird. If you walk into a room and Angry Body begins to chase you, if you just leave the room and re-enter, for some reason he'll teleport behind you? I have absolutely no idea why this is a feature in the game, but it is. Putting all three of these things together makes a decent strategy for dealing with Angry Body. It's obviously not perfect and it's still stupidly difficult, but it's better than nothing. So all we have to do is farm those invisible points for three minutes and complete the mechanism ending and that's basically it. Seeing as how this ending is basically the exact same as the mechanism ending, but with more points, it's gonna also go in B tier. I'm sure this ending would be decently difficult if I actually tried to get my points, but I'm not doing that. Never turn down some good old child murder. Oh. 
Bro, what am I supposed to do? What? I don't know. I'm just gonna hope that it's not in the spider location. We did it. No off switch. Let's go, dude. <laughs> Alright, so that was the fourth ending out of eight, and we've already completed every single level in the game, so how the f*** is there four more endings? Originally, we had thought that one of the endings had to do with collecting these cupcake collectibles all throughout the levels. It was mainly just because Daco had said this in one of his videos. One of the endings is actually these cupcakes here. The thing is, he meant to say cakes, not cupcakes, so that was fun. But you're probably wondering, there's no cakes in any of the levels. You can go through every single level in the game, and there's no cakes ever. The thing is, there actually is a cake in every single level, but you have to do something very specific for it to actually show up. As I mentioned a while back, there's actually an enemy in the game known as Enemy B, which is Purple Guy, and he's present in every single level. And if we kill Purple Guy in a given level, a cake will now appear that we can pick up. So now we know what to do. We have to go through the entire game, killing 16 purple guys in total, as well as collecting every single cake. But that's still easier said than done, because purple guy moves 1.5 times faster than us, and he also has the highest HP in the game. Since there's two endings that rely on only the cakes, I'm going to be talking about every single purple guy in the first 10 levels during this ending, and then for the next ending, I'm going to be talking about every other one. Our first purple guy is obviously in level 1, but he's located in a secret room to the left of room 4, right behind this shelf. This secret room is known as room 210, but if you look at it, where is purple guy? He's obviously in his car, because why would he not be? Killing him is really simple. He only takes 5 gear hits to kill, and we spawn with 8, so that's not a problem. And there's basically no way for him to get close to us as long as we just walk down this hallway and continuously shoot him. After absolutely shredding Purple Guy, we can move back to room 2, which now has a cake for us to collect. Once we pick up this cake, it will automatically end the level, and it will take us to level 2. Level 2's cake is way more complicated. It requires us to first make it to the night guard room, and then leave. This then opens up one of the bathroom doors in room 9, which we can then enter and shoot down a vent cover. Then we have to go all the way through this vent system to make it to a secret part of room 6, which we couldn't enter normally. In this room, there's tons of gears for us to pick up, but there's also purple guy who's hiding in a locker. This would usually be pretty scary since he's so close to us, but we get given so many gears in this room that if we shoot fast enough, he can't even make it to us. After killing him, we have to go all the way back through the vent system and go all the way left to room 8, and there's the cake. Level 3's cake is super easy to get. In fact, purple guy isn't even in a secret room, he's just in a room. If we enter the left door in room 14, that'll take us to room 218, whatever. In this room, purple guy's hiding behind these curtains, and all we have to do is walk up to them and he'll pop out. Using the gears we currently have won't fully kill him, so what I do is I break out the classic chicken ninja table combat to absolutely murder him. And luckily for us, the cake literally spawns in the room that we are in, so all we have to do is go to the top right corner and pick it up. Heading into level 4, sadly, purple guy is in another secret room. In room 201, as you can see, there's a secret trigger right behind this curtain. Walking behind this curtain will take you to a secret vent system known as room 209, and connected to this vent system is room 220, which is where purple guy is. The bad thing about this is, we barely have any gears and we're meant to kill purple guy, so how are we going to do that? It's actually really simple, this vent system that we can walk through completely breaks purple guy's AI and he just doesn't know what to do. The best place I found was this big long wall right in the middle of the room, which for some reason he has to completely climb before he can chase after us. This means we can just sit and wait at the top of this wall for our gears to recharge, and once they do, we can just shoot him and do the exact same thing all over again. After killing him and picking up some gears, the cake replaces Chica in room 208, so now it's time to eat some of Chica's cake. That is not... what... okay. Level 5 is probably one of the easiest ones, because purple guy is literally unavoidable. One thing I did notice is, in the newest patch, instead of purple guy spawning where he's supposed to, over near the curtains, he would just spawn right where you are. Usually I would back out of that room anyways, just because room 18 is bigger and easier to kill him in, but that's still really weird. 
After picking up the gears from the last level, we should have six, meaning we have enough to kill him without having to worry about anything. So now, all we have to do is actually find the cake. It's technically in a secret room, but not really. In room 19, which is the room where Purple Guy spawns, there's a breakable door near the top right, and in that room, there's the cake. Level 6 just requires you to explore the entire map. We got enough gears in level 5 that we can easily kill him, so all we have to do is find and kill Purple Guy and then find the cake. Instead of breaking down this door and entering the vent system like we usually do, we can take this right path which leads us to a room which doesn't have Purple Guy. Just kidding, he's in the closet. After lodging some gears into Purple Guy's skull, we have to go all the way back around to the spawning room. Once we're there, there's a somewhat hidden room to the right of spawn, and inside that room, there's the cake. Heading into level 7, this night's purple guy is another one that's not difficult, it's just really fun. If we look at level 7's map again, right here, ladies and gentlemen, that is a loop. Meaning, yes, we can go full washing machine mode with purple guy and put him on a spin cycle. And that's literally all I do. I just continuously do loops with purple guy, recharging gears and shooting them at him till he dies. Once we kill purple guy, a locked door in room 32 will become unlocked, and of course, that's where the cake is. Level 8 is another level where Purple Guy is just standing in some random ass room and all we have to do is kill him. In this case, he's standing in a small hallway to the right of this big room where the Vanny enemies are. And if you're wondering, I'm of course gonna kill the Vanny enemies before doing anything else. Once Purple Guy is dead, all we have to do is go back to the room with the switch, there's the cake right there on the counter, that's a f table, and it's time for level 9. Level 9 is probably tied with level 5 for being the easiest purple guy kill, because again, purple guy is literally unavoidable. I do enter a vent system to the left of the spawn room, but that's only because there's some gears in there, and I am a very big fan of gears. Once I collect my gears, I walk directly into that pizzeria and laugh in purple guy's face as I pelt him with shards of metal. And just like that, we have now collected every single cake in the first 10 levels. Level 10 is a bonus night, meaning there's no cake, so now it's time to skip the rest of the levels and tell you about the ending. To get this ending specifically, it just requires us to get the forgiven ending after collecting all the cakes. So we swiftly run through the boss fight and head to my favorite place of all time, pizza, and we now have ending 5 under our belt. Since this ending literally required us to kill one of the hardest enemies in the game 16 different times, it is without a doubt going at A tier. Hello? Hello? Bro. Hello? Hello? What the f- You forget that I was training table combat- OH SHIT MOTHER f NO! Bro, why do you do that sh**, dude? Oh my god, bro. Oh, oh, you forgot I was D1! You forgot! Oh, if you did that, if you did the little switchy back, I probably would have shit on your face. Oh, I'm risking it for the biscuit, and your boy loves biscuit! Oh, and I got those. I'm beautiful, lovely, lovely. Battery! Recharge. Oh! Oh my god, I clutched that! <laughs> oh, he's trying to be Michael Jackson! Oh, and you dropped it. I'm gonna give you a kiss on the mouth. Pause. What the fuck? Because we all know how much I love extra spicy McChickens. What is wrong with you? Thank you, Jesus Christ. I f Oh my god, did I do it, dude? Please tell me I did that, bro. Not of the machine, baby! Let's go, man. <laughs> That's right, it's time for ending six, but before that, we get to talk about the rest of the cakes. To get the cake in level 11, it's actually pretty simple, but before we do anything, we're gonna go down to where the night guard is so we can pick up three free gears. Now that we've finished that, we're gonna go to the right of this big room, and behind these two curtains is our friend Purple Guy. After using our gears to kill Purple Guy, if we head back up to spawn, we can see that a door has now opened, and inside that door, we got a cake. For level 12, we're basically gonna be doing the exact same thing. We start off the level with only three gears, so we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom left and pick up another three gears, giving us six. 
This means we can easily kill Purple Guy who's hiding in the top left of the map in this vent. Once we've killed Purple Guy, it's as simple as returning back to the spawn area, and in the bottom right corner, we have our cake. Sadly, our fun streak of easy Purple Guy kills comes to an end because we have to do level 13. Again, like the last few levels, I start off level 13 with only 3 gears. The problem is, I don't have any free gears that I can pick up, and I still have to kill Purple Guy. In order to get enough gears, I'm going to use a completely broken trick, but I'm not going to tell you about it because I'm going to tell you later. All you need to know is, we go from 3 gears to the maximum of 8, and that's all that matters. The weird thing about this level is, Purple Guy doesn't actually spawn naturally, we have to spawn him ourselves. Moving up to the top right of the map, we enter room 237. In this room, there's 4 different triggers. These two on the end signify when the player has left the room, and these two are to trigger this animation. After the animation is finished, Purple Guy is now spawned, meaning we can kill him. Once we're done with that, we can move up to the top left into the kitchen, which is where our fancy old cake is. Level 14's cake is pretty simple to get, but I make it super complicated because I want a lot of gears. In order to grab the cake and as many gears as possible, I'm first going to do the regular strategy of finding the night guard. This means going to the right to pick up the key, unlocking the cabinet, and going all the way through the vent system and finding the night guard. From there, I'm going to pick up the battery and the three gears given to us in the corner and leave out the door. The room we enter into is where Purple Guy is, so I'm going to take this opportunity to kill him while I still have enough gears. And once we're done with that, I'm going to go back through the vents and collect the gears which have for some reason respawned, but instead of going all the way through the vents, I'm going to jump out early and go through this hole. This hole leads to the kitchen, and as we all know, cakes are always in the kitchen, and that's where ours is. After that super complex level, the game apologizes and gives us an easy one with level 15. Much like level 13, Purple Guy doesn't actually spawn on the map, we have to trigger him again, but this one is not difficult to do. From spawn, we're gonna walk to the right and then down, and now we've made it to room 285. Much like room 237, this room has two triggers, one to show the end of the level, and one to spawn Purple Guy. So all we have to do is trigger Purple Guy, wait for him to jump out of the ball pit, and then blast him with some gears, and now he's dead. And you must be thinking, the cake's probably like really far to make the level difficult, right? Um, it's in the next room to the right. And that's it. Our next level up, level 16, as you should know, is a bonus night, meaning there is no purple guy and there is also no cake, so we're on to level 17. Level 17, for being such a massive level, is not actually that complicated. To start off this level, we're gonna go to the left of spawn to open up this closet, which has three gears in it. And from there, we're gonna go over to the ladder, where I'm gonna perform the super top secret trick that I'm not telling you yet. Once we make it to the lower floor, we now have 8 gears, and if you remember from ending 2, to make it to the night guard, we take the right path. So, can you guess what's on the left path? It's Purple Guy. Once we kill Purple Guy, we're gonna go back to the ladder we took to get down here, and literally right at the top of it is our cake. Level 18 is obviously gonna be the hardest one, because it always is. To start off the night, we're going to break open this closet and grab the three gears inside of it, and then we're going to take the exact same path as the regular night. So we're going to go all the way to the left and go up through the vent so we can make it to the play place which has the key. But this time, we don't actually need the key. We're going to go all the way to the right, taking this hidden path to make it to a secret room. Once we've made it to the secret room, also known as room 267, we're going to open up the right closet which has three gears in it. Then we're going to open up the left closet which of course has a furry in it. After absolutely John Wicking the shit out of that man, we're gonna go back up this ladder into the vent and take a right. And guess what? There's the puppet holding up our final cake. That's right, our final cake. Level 19 is the Springtrap boss fight, which doesn't have a cake, and level 20 does have a cake, but if we pick it up, that'll give us our last ending. So, how exactly are we supposed to get this ending? We have to beat level 22 again. Level 21 is the exact same as the level 21 for ending 3 and ending 4. Nothing changes and we don't have to do anything new. And level 22 is virtually the exact same. Except for, you know that really, really unfair enemy I talked about earlier called Angry Body? He gets like 10 times worse. But anyways, I'll be talking about him in a bit because he gets more ruthless for the last two endings. Like I said, to get this ending, it just requires us to beat level 22, meaning we have to go through the play place, find the key, unlock the cell, and jump scare purple guy. And that is way easier said than done, for reasons you'll know in a bit, but all you need to know is here's where the key is, I jump scared purple guy, and I finally got the ending. 
Despite this ending being way more difficult than Not of the Machine, it's still going in A tier because it is nowhere near the difficulty of the next two endings. Alright, I'm about to shoot a kid right point blank in the face. How the f did you hit me? Oh, your boy's. Your boy's f***ing dead! Oh! 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 Your boy's good at killing kids. You cannot say anything about it. F now, bro. Oh my god. I missed that sh like I missed your mom. What? No, bro. I can't. I can't shoot him that fast, dude. I might have like major league fumbled, bro. Yo, can you f leave, my guy? Bro, what? What? <gasps> Yes, that's it. Never forgive, never escape. Ugh. <laughs> the ending we are doing right now, Code in His Machine, is basically the exact same as the eighth ending. It just depends on what you do at the end of the night that actually matters. To get the ending code in his machine, the game requires you to do two things. Kill all the purple guys so you can pick up every cake in every level, and you also need to complete level 22. But you might be asking yourself, isn't that the exact same thing we did in the last night? Uh, yeah. But these last two endings require us to do something very specific. Last night when I said level 22 was the exact same except for one enemy, that was a lie. There's one more thing. In level 22, if we look at room 192, here's what it looks like during a regular playthrough, and here's what it looks like after collecting every cake. Notice anything different? No, it's not that the pink box has changed. It, Golden Freddy's here. This Golden Freddy is known in the game files as Object Golden, and it only appears if we've collected every single cake and we've made it to level 22. When the player comes in contact with Golden, it acts as an item and will be collected, and now the player is known as a follower. So you've probably figured this out by now, but when we make it to level 22, to get this ending, not only do we have to collect the key to Purple Guy's cell, but we also have to collect Golden Freddy. Luckily for us, unlike the key, Golden Freddy will always be at this exact same spot on the map every single time. The thing is, I have not talked about the new enemy yet, that enemy being Glitch Trap. This thing right here is known in the game files as Glitch Trap, and you want to know the one good thing about it? It only takes one hit to kill. That's great, right? No. No, it's not. I still have bad stuff to talk about. Glitch Trap is 2.8 times faster than the player, and when he's killed, he has the ability to respawn in almost any room in the entire level. In addition to this, he will never stop chasing you, and the only way to get rid of him is by killing him with a gear. And to make all of this as bad and as unfair as possible, if Glitch Trap comes in contact with the player at all, regardless of gear amount and regardless of if you have an extra credit, your run will immediately end. So your 30 minute, 40 minute run where you killed every purple guy, collected every cake, and completed almost every single level in the game can instantly be over if this enemy touches you once. And get this, all of that was not even the worst part. For some ungodly reason, if you happen to be standing near the exit of a room, Glitch Trap can teleport to your position and instantly kill you for no reason at all. Take this clip for example. I'm standing there for a good 5-10 seconds waiting for Glitch Trap to come through that hallway because I know he's in the other room. And for some reason, he never does it. So I decide to come into the next room to see what's happening, and bada bing bada boom, I'm f dead. So, what exactly do we even do? We have a teleporting juggernaut that moves almost three times faster than the player, and if it touches us, we have to restart the entire game. You wanna know what we do? Absolutely nothing. For these last two endings, we are literally at the mercy of RNG, just hoping that Glitch Trap takes longer to respawn than our gears take to regenerate. Apart from these closets in room 282 and 283 which have gears in them, and a little strategy that I made which doesn't completely work, that's all we can do. And that's literally all I have to say for this ending. That strategy I was talking about and any other trick I've mentioned in this video I will be talking about next ending, but that's basically it. Somehow I was able to find and collect the key as well as make it to Golden Freddy, and to get the ending code in his machine we're gonna be jump scaring purple guy, and finally there we go.
I don't even think I need to be talking about this. For being completely unfair and virtually impossible, this ending is without a doubt going in S tier. Don't do the thing. You did the thing. No! Why did I spawn backwards? Oh my god, it's just about getting back there, and it takes 30 minutes to get back there, and all I have to do is... Did I even kill him? Oh, well, the cake's here. I'm <laughs> Oh my god, the brain. I just had a f brain hemorrhage. Bro, you... What? Now, like, everything is f How did I not shoot you there? Oh, and you got me use? I love you. Oh, f Fuck, dude! What the fuck? Ah! Bro, he got- he was fucking a cockroach, bro! He fucking- oh. What? Bro! Robot thinks he's big brain, but he's not. What the fuck? Uh, ah! Why are you doing that, bro? That is so unfair! Are you fu- Their fate lies on your balls. Pause. Bro! Oh my god! Rather stupid of a minute. Get me the fuck out of here! Mm, William Afton's in the metaverse, bro. Ah, bro, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> That's right, we have made it to the final ending in this game, but we can't celebrate yet because we still have to beat it. Like I said during Code and His Machine, this ending basically has the exact same requirements. All that matters is what we do when we enter Purple Guy's cell. So, to get our 8th and final ending, we need to collect every single cake in every single level, as well as make it to level 22, collect Golden Freddy, collect the key, and leave out through the vent. If you don't meet the requirements, this vent is usually closed off by a red spring trap, but when we do, we will seal the deal, get this ending, and finally beat the game. That being said, it's time for me to explain my strategy for dealing with Glitch Trap. Just like the strategy for Angry Body, this strategy revolves around three different things. The first thing being, never go near the ending of a room, ever. I feel like this rule is pretty obvious. Here's a clip from the last ending, slowed down to 0.1 times speed. As you can see, I'm standing there having a good old time, and Glitch Trap appears for two frames, and then I'm dead. So yeah, rule number one of this strategy, do not go near the end of a room ever unless you've been standing in that room for a good 30 seconds. Rule number two, this is the exact same as the third rule from the Angry Body strategy, but just abuse the chasing AI. Glitch Trap has similar AI to Angry Body, so if you enter a room and Glitch Trap is in that room, you can leave and re-enter and then for some reason Glitch Trap will be behind you. Again, I have absolutely zero idea as to why or how this works, but setting up a gear shot to kill Glitch Trap is way easier if you know exactly where he's going to come from. And for the third and final rule, we are going to be going to the map. Right now, it is crucial to find the perfect path to follow because we have more things to collect, more enemies, and a lot more risk. Again, here's the map for level 22, and here's the possible locations for every collectible. One thing to note, this room right here, which I call Switch Room, obviously has, you know, a switch in it. And if we turn it off, it opens up a metal door giving us access to this room. So the best path I found to find every single collectible as fast as possible was first entering through room 162. This would spawn me into room 188, and from there I would do a loop around to this hole which led into room 283. 
From there, I would move left into room 282, also known as switch room. Here, I would do three things. Check for the key, turn off the switch, and open up the closet for some extra gears. Once I was finished with that, I would leave switch room and head directly left to room 176, where I could fall through this hole and make it to Golden Freddy room. Once again, I would be checking for a key, but if it's not there, I'm obviously gonna leave. From there, I would head down and take a right into Spider Room, where I'm again gonna check for a key. Now you can probably see the rest of the path I'm gonna take. I'm gonna go down and right, and if I haven't found the key yet, I'm gonna check Chunky Bonnie Room, because that's the only place it could be. And from there, I'm gonna head directly up and keep going to find Golden Freddy. By now, I should have every single collectible, so all I need to do is get the f*** out of this place. And this usually meant just continuously going right so I could leave out into room 158. So there is the entire strategy. It doesn't help a lot because Glitch Trap is just way too difficult, but it's what I found the most useful to at least keep every run as consistent as possible. But do we really care about that? No, I know you're all here just to find out the secrets behind the super epic ultra gear duplication glitch. To perform this glitch, it is very easy. It can be done in literally any level that contains a Vanny enemy, either Van Knife or Van Cut. All you have to do is find this enemy and shoot them once, then you let them hit you and while they're still doing their attack animation, you shoot them again. This causes the enemy to do their death animation dropping 3 gears, but for some reason, they do it again and drop another 3 gears. Meaning, instead of using 2 gears and getting 3 back, we use 3 and get 6. I use this in pretty much every single one of my purple guy killing runs because it's literally just the easiest way to get gears as fast as possible. So there we go, we literally know everything we need to know about this game and this ending specifically, so it's just about putting in enough attempts that we get good RNG and finally succeed in getting our final ending. After collecting my well-deserved key and gaining the powers of Golden Freddy, we walk up to Purple Guy's cell, walk right past him, and choose Mercy by going through the vent. And there we go, we now have the 8th and final ending of this game, Happiest Day. Again, like the last ending, I feel like I don't even need to explain myself. These two endings are basically the exact same, and they are stupidly difficult. So this ending is most definitely getting an S here. I have to use brain. Me need to use brain. Me no use brain. Me think caveman no brain. Oh, we did Whoa. Oh, yo, that was the fake of the century, bro. Mm -hmm. I got stuck in a f cardboard box. You're telling me Freddy Fazbear, the man, the myth, the legend, gets stuck on cardboard boxes. The f Bow. I caught him off guard. I snuck up behind him. Bro. Bro. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? How the f What are the hitboxes? <laughs> okay. I don't know when I lost the audio for the mic, but I do not care. I don't care. <laughs> there we go. We have finally beaten the entirety of Mechanism. As I said in the intro, this game was created by fellow YouTuber Andy Matronic. She did an absolutely amazing job, and if you want to play this game, the Game Jolt page will be linked down below in the description for you to download and play the game. As for my opinion, this game was created by only one person, and it was a beginner programmer. It's got an absolutely amazing soundtrack. My favorite song in the entire game is actually playing right now. My only complaint on the game is how difficult it actually is. The final two endings don't really add anything to the game, and they're just put there to make the game difficult. The problem is, this difficulty comes in the form of just being unfair. But whatever, I still had a fun time playing the game, I had a fun time making this video, and hopefully, you had a fun time watching it. 
I feel like I say this in every single video, but that's because I do. But thank you all so much for the support on the channel recently. Hopefully the next video coming out will be the finale to the 10 times Cuphead HP mod, but I make no guarantees. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Any other games you want me to play, leave them down in the comments below. And as always, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.